Hey everyone, it's Nicole Noasad. I'm happy to be back on the Jelly Bean Soup blog today with a quick tutorial on showing you how to use the Jelly Bean Soup stamp and stencil sets. Try to say that fast three times. Anyway, uh, let's get started. You just need a few simple supplies and the stamp and stencil sets. So I have four different stamp and stencil sets here. Um, you can see they're all a little bit different and they're meant to be coordinated together. Of course, you could interchange them any way you like, but um, each one comes with its own self-adhesive stencil and it's very simple. You just peel it back off a of backing. It's very pliable, which you can see it bends really, really well and it's really sticky. So that's really handy for a couple things we're going to do up ahead. And then each one comes with its own set of stamps. Uh, these ones, I love these labels here and they're really, really sticky. They stick to the backing really well. So you're not going to have any of that problems not sticking to your stamping block. And as you can see, there's quite a few different kinds and there's an, a couple missing too that I don't have yet, but um, these ones are really cool. I really like each and every one of them so far. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna start off with this polka dot stamp or stencil, sorry. And I've just gone ahead and cut out some scrap pieces of cardstock. Uh, for this uh, tutorial, you are gonna need a craft mat for a lot of these projects, but it's not necessary that you do, but it makes your cleanup a lot quicker. So what I'm going to do is just grab some, some spray mist and my scrap cardstock sheet and I'm just going to line my stencil right onto it. And as you can see, um, it's really bendy in my hand, which is good, but it's still easy to line up. So I'm just going to line that up on my scrap piece of cardstock and rub it down. And you can see it's not going anywhere. That thing is, is stuck pretty good. And grab my mist and I'm just going to go ahead and give it a couple quick spritzes just with this orange mist color. And I use my mist, but any mist would be fine. I'm just gonna add a little bit more to make it darker. And then I'm gonna grab some baby wipes for my cleanup. I'm gonna rub mine in, but that's totally not necessary. You could just mist it and lift it as, as you want, but I'm gonna rub mine in just to make the dots a little bit clearer. And you can see, you don't have to wait. You could just peel it back and there's your misted part. So when you're done with that, you can just set aside. And like I said, baby wipe is really easy just to clean it up. You can see it just comes off really fast and easy. And if it's still really wet, I'm just gonna grab a paper towel here just to finish cleaning up my mat for the next thing that we're gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna grab another piece of cardstock and a different mask this time, or stencil this time, sorry. I'm gonna use the Arrow one from the, the set peel it off and what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to show you something where you can get a raised texture using the stencil and with that I have some modeling paste here this is just some modeling paste I got at the big box craft store it's kind of the texture of a thick toothpaste so you just need a little bit of that and probably an old gift card or hotel card that you're not using anymore and you just want to apply a thin layer over top of your stencil um, it can be thick in some areas if you want. If you want a more of a raised area on one part or thinner in others, you can leave some areas open however you want to put it on. But I'll just do a thin layer for your purpose to show you. And you just want to scrape off any extra that you don't want. And then you can just go ahead right away and peel off that stencil. And you can see you have a really clear, cool arrow pattern. Now that probably takes about 15-20 minutes to dry, so I'm just going to set that aside. But we are going to use those later. Now the label ones are really cool. You can use them for a few different things. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you here is just a little bit of liquid glue and I'm just going to brush that on with an old paintbrush but if you had a foam brush that would be perfect. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue and then I'm actually going to go ahead and grab some craft glitter and just add a little sprinkling of glitter right over top of that liquid glue. And I'm just going to scrap piece of paper and just tap off some of the excess. And it looks like I missed a couple spots, so I'm just going to add a little bit more glitter. And then peel that right off. And you can see that the stencil comes really easily off the paper. And it doesn't rip off a top layer of your paper when it does. It just comes cleanly off and it doesn't lose its shape either. Because it's pliable, you'd think it might stretch a little out of shape, but it doesn't. It holds its shape. Now that pliability comes in, is that even a word, but that, that ply, the pliability comes in really handy for craft projects. So in this case, because it's self-adhesive, I'm just going to stick this onto the back of this old um, 
jar that I found and I should have taken the label off so I apologize in advance for not doing that but what I really wanted to show you was a frosted glass look but unfortunately I could not find my medium that does that I know I have some in this house I just can't find it um, but that was the intention was to do like a little bit of a candle holder or something with that but acrylic paint works just as well and it would be put on the same way you just put a little bit on your craft mat and with the paintbrush you would just layer it on um, because I'm going to use the paint, I'm going to add on quite a bit just so it's it's not really see-through. I want it to be a little bit thicker. If you're going to use that frosting medium to frost or et etching cream, that's what it's called, to etch, to etch your glass, um, what you'll want to do is just do it the same way. Just paint it on with a paintbrush and load it. Probably a foam brush is better for the etching cream. And then when you have it all on as you'd like it, you would just peel off the stencil like we're going to do here. You don't need to let it dry on there. You just go ahead right away and peel it off. The circles will be intact. And then there's your painted look. If you're gonna use the etching cream, you'd probably need to let it sit for about five or 10 minutes, whatever the instructions tell you. And then rinse it under some cool water and you'll see that um, your glass would be etched in that area. So that would be pretty cool for Christmas gifts or things like that, right? Um, so one last thing, a couple last things I wanna show you here is has to do with that modeling paste we did earlier. There's a couple different things you can do over top of the modeling paste. Of course, you could leave it plain, um, but here what I'm doing is just putting some gelatos on my craft mat, and by no means am I a gelato expert whatsoever. Um, so I'm just going to mist them with a little bit of water and create a paint. I'm just going to rub my finger in there. And then using a paintbrush, I'm just going to paint that right over top of the dried modeling paste. If you had watercolor paint, that would be the same. You could use It would be the same effect. So I'm just going to you know, add just a little bit of a layer here. And actually I want to add more blue because it's not very blue, it's more brown. So let's see if I can fix that with a little bit more blue. Just gonna add that, a little bit more water. And then paint that right on. So again, you don't need to fool around with gesso like I did, but you could definitely just take some watercolor paint. And once it's sat for a few minutes, you can see I just grabbed a baby wipe and wiped off the top of the paper and those white modeling paste dots just pop right back up again. So that's super fun. That would be a great card front or even part of your scrapbook page or a pocket style scrapbook card. You could do that too, it'd be really cool. So I'm just gonna put that side to dry. And one last thing I'm gonna show you has to do with the dried modeling paste again and just an ink pad. If you just grab a regular old ink pad, not a spongy ink pad because um, you could not ruin your paper but kind of wreck your design, it's very, very lightly don't put a lot of pressure just lightly drag it across and you can see it's the modeling paste is just picking up ever so slightly uh, that color of ink if you use that spongy ink pad like I mentioned um, you could push too hard like I did and uh, get that color on the bottom of your cardstock and you don't want to do that so but I really like that raised look it's really cool so here's all the things we did we did the misting and the modeling paste we watercolored some add glitter with the ink and then um, the possibilities really are endless for all the craft projects with it too so all right here is that one we did with the mist here's just a close-up of those dots you can see they're almost perfect um, it just depends on how much mist you apply and here's that modeling paste with the watercolor and it's kind of hard to see but what's most important is that the white dots are still raised in white and that that watercolor kind of gelato look is, is left on your cardstock and I think you could use the glitter probably on any one of these using any of the stencils so it looks really cool with the labels though I think and then finally is the ink over top of the modeling paste and you can see it's kind of a cool artsy look and I really like how you know the dark contrast from the ink color to the white cardstock and finally here is this part of one of the stamps in the set and you can see I actually used the label to stuck down around the edge and added some pencil lines around the edge and then here's another one of the stamps here with just a label sticker stuff and sewed down. And then this one is a close up of my project where I used the same polka dot stencil with a little bit of gray ink just on top of it um, to, to add some contrast over the white pattern paper back or cardstock background. And so here's my project all stamped and stenciled. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, thanks again for joining me. I hope you'll give stamps and senses a try. They're really fun and the possibilities really are endless. Thanks so much for joining us on the Jilly Bean Soup blog. We'll see you again.